Module number eight is on repayment calculators. It's very important that you have at least an estimate of what your monthly payments are going to be when you choose a repayment plan. And this is especially important when you get your disclosure statement from your loan servicer indicating what your payments are actually going to be. If they're significantly different than what you were expecting, now you can go back and contact them and say, how did you come up with this number? I use this calculator and this is what I'm showing for a monthly payment. So very important to use repayment calculators to help you make a decision about the best repayment plan for you and one that you can comfortably afford. Now these are some calculators of note. We're going to reference these in more detail in just a moment. Finade.org, what I call the simple quick and dirty calculator. You can easily run some time-driven repayment numbers with this plan. StudentAid.gov, we have referenced this before. The loan simulator is terrific for what I call what-if scenarios. What if I'm married filing jointly? What if I'm married filing separately? What is my payment going to be if my income is $100,000? What's my payment going to be if my income is $200,000? So the loan simulator is great for what-if scenarios. The Midlands Organizer and Calculator from the AAMC is a terrific calculator. It is the preferred calculator for medical students, residents, and fellows. We would strongly suggest, if you are not already using this, that you use this calculator. There are some other calculators for other disciplines. Dental students can use a version of the AAMC calculator. This is called the AAMC ADEA, the American Dental Education Association Dental Loan Organizer and Calculator called DLOC, available at adea.org slash DLOC for dental students. Veterinary medical students can also use something called the Loan Repayment Simulator, and you see the web address there. That is a terrific calculator for veterinary medical students. Now, regardless of the calculator you're using, it's very important to know the assumptions that are built into the calculators. In general, this is what you're gonna find. For time plans, like the standard 10-year and extended 25-year term, the calculator is going to assume that you hold the loan to term. In other words, that you use the full 10 years or the full 25 years. For an income plan, like pay or repay, when you go in and put in your information, it's going to assume no change in marital or tax filing status or family size. How would it know that you're going to get married or when? And then how would it know if you're going to file jointly or separately? So however you initially set it up for an income plan, the calculator is going to assume no change in marital or tax filing status or in family size. The calculators will assume no aggressive payments. How would they know if you're going to overpay? And if so, by how much? And the calculators will assume no interruption of payments, so no postponement periods. And for income plans, they will assume a set annual income increase. It's usually going to be in the neighborhood of about 3.5%. So always know the assumptions with the calculators you are using. Now, a few reminders before we look at the individual calculators. Your loan servicer is going to determine the actual repayment amount under any repayment plan that you choose. The loan calculators are simply helping you get an estimate of what the payment amount is going to be. The income-driven repayment plan calculations are based on a set federal formula used by all the loan servicers and all the calculators. So you should not get a significantly different number from your loan servicer as long as they use the same income and family size information that you're using. And also a common sense reminder, with the calculators, many of them, perhaps most of them, you can upload your current federal debt directly from studentaid.gov. But if you are planning to do additional borrowing, be sure you add your prospective borrowing to the calculator after you upload your federal debt, that way you'll get a much more accurate reading or estimate of your repayment amounts. Now let's take a quick look at some of the repayment calculators that we are recommending. Finade.org will give you a quick and dirty estimate for repayment under time, driven repayment plans like the standard 10-year and extended 25-year plan. It doesn't accommodate different interest rates and accrued interest, so if you use this plan, simply go to calculators, then loan payment, 
enter the balance, the interest rate, and the term. And this is where, for example, if you borrowed $200,000 for medical school, you're going to have different interest rates on all your loans. So use an average interest rate. And for the balance, accommodate the interest that would have accrued over the period of time of medical school and your six month window period before the loans come due. So for example, if you borrow $200,000 in this calculator, you might put 230,000 and you might put an average interest rate of 6%. So use an estimated balance at repayment, an estimated average interest rate, and then the term 10 or 25 years. You can put zero fees and a $50 minimum payment. And once again, that will give you at least a good estimate of what the payment would be under a standard 10 year or 25 year extended repayment plan. Now we've referenced this website before in the loan simulator at studentaid.gov. I call this the what if calculator. What if I get married and what if we file jointly versus separately? What if my spouse has federal student loans? What is the impact going to be on my payment with an income driven repayment plan? What if my income goes up? How high can my monthly payments go with an income driven repayment plan? And what if I have children? My family size changes. What's going to happen to my monthly loan payments? So again, the loan simulator is great for what if scenarios. Now I say this with great respect. There are some problems with this loan calculator and I was a bit hesitant to get into this much detail in this module, but I think it's extremely important for you to remember, especially as a medical school student, that this calculator does not take into account residency and fellowship training. It cannot distinguish a salary between a resident fellow and an attending physician. So we suggest you use this only to estimate the monthly payment amount under pay and repay. It's very good at that. When you go in and put in your information, look for the first payment in the payment range under pay and repay, but ignore all the other numbers and do not use this for total repayment or forgiveness amounts if you are a medical student. Borrowers who are not doing a residency program can use this calculator for total repayment under the time-driven plans, standard 10 and extended 25, and the pay calculations are correct but the repay calculations are not because repay will show up on this calculator as a 20-year plan, which is wrong. It should be 25 years. So once again, try not to make it complicated. Use the loan simulator for what-if scenario, the calculations and the questions that we ask on the earlier slide. Now, if you're a medical student, clearly the best calculator running away is the MedLoans Organizer and Calculator. We call it MLOC, and there are two sections, the Organizer and the Calculator. By the way, MLOC is free for allopathic and osteopathic medical students. The first section, the Organizer, this is where you can keep your entire borrowing history, and you can upload your federal borrowing from studentaid.gov right into this calculator. We've already referenced always manually input prospective borrowing unless all your loans have already been dispersed. If you're consolidating, don't upload anything manually put in your consolidation loan and the interest rate. There is a special section in this calculator, a special enhancement for married borrowers that we think you'll find terrific and that we mentioned in an earlier module. But to me, this is where the MLOC really shines because the calculator will let you customize repayment based on residency, fellowship, and career plans. You simply go in and input different scenarios based on residency length, subspecialty, fellowship, and projected salary, and you will see very good estimates of repayment and potential forgiveness amounts under all the income plans. So once again, if you're a medical student, this is the calculator to be using for total repayment and forgiveness estimates. So some quick takeaways. The calculators do help prepare you for what's coming after graduation and will give you a good idea about what the payments will be under the different repayment plans. Just always remember to look at the assumptions and remember that the repayment amounts are actually going to come from your loan servicer. This is the end of module number eight.